I wasn't too happy with the video that I posted today on the spiral hat finishing, so I'm redoing it a second time. Hopefully this one turns out better. Uh, the pattern is based on a design from Plymouth Yarns. I'm just going to elaborate more on how to finish it since the first video I did was how to actually make it. I will touch on how to make it, but kind of go through that part quickly. To start with, you make a chain. This is for your provisional cast on. You make a chain of at least five stitches more than what your cast on is. I believe in their pattern the cast on is 70, so your chain would be about 75. On one side you'll see the V's, and that's not the side we're going to use. We're going to use the little bars in the back. What I like to do is put a little uh, stitch uh, safety pin here to help keep it from unraveling while I'm knitting it. And you want to make sure your a chain thread is a contrasting color from the actual color that you're going to knit. So I go in at least one and just catch the bar. You don't want to catch any other piece of the un fiber because then it make it very difficult to unravel and remove the chain off of the stitches. So you'd go inside the bar, yarn over, pull it through. Go inside the bar, yarn over, pull it through. Now I'm not doing a whole big hat. I'm just doing a little abbreviated version just to where I just gotta find the other bar just to show how this part is done. If you want to see the full version of this part, go to the other spiral hat how to pattern uh, that I video that I put out previously. So you go till you get your required amount. I'll just stop here because I'm just doing a little quickie. And the pattern says you start with two rows of reverse stockinette, and then you do four rows of stockinette, then four rows of reverse, then four rows of stockinette. That's what gives the wave. So you start with your four rows of pearl, two rows of pearl. And when I do my increases, I always do my increases on a knit side. Even when I'm doing the pearl reverse stockinette, it's a lot easier. You can increase on the pearl side. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just personal option, personal preference. But you would knit, you purl across your first roll. Now your second roll is going to be your increase roll because this is your knit. So you start with your increase or you can start with your decrease. Whichever you want to start with, just always remember to increase on the same side and decrease on the same side. So you knit your first one. Separate your needles if you're not used to it, and then go in the back loop and yarn over again. And there's your increase. That gives you your two stitches where you originally had one. Now you knit to the within three stitches of the end, or two stitches, whichever you prefer. This is purely optional. I like to do my knit two together one stitch in. That gives me a nice smooth edge in which uh, the finished hat can be on. Alright, so there's my two rolls of reverse stockinette. Now it's time to do knit. And since this is my increase side, I'm going to do my decrease over here. Knit two. Knit two together. Because this is a knit roll. And you knit to the end. And you increase in this stitch. So you knit in the front and the back of the same stitch. And then we purl back. I'm doing this part kind of quickly because purling is purling, knitting is knitting. Okay, now we're on the next roll. And since we're on the knit side, this will be our second decrease as you have two de decreases in every four rolls. So I knit the first one, knit two together, and knit to the end. And then I do the increase in the last stitch, knit, separate, go in the back loop, and complete. And then you do a purl roll, so when you're finished with this part, it's going to look like this. 
You're going to have your two rows of reverse stockinette, four rows of stockinette, four rows of reverse, four rows of regular, and as you see, it goes on an angle as you do your increases on one side and decreases on the other. And you can see I've got a little pin. I usually put a pin on the side that I'm doing my increases on. So as I'm knitting, I know when to do my increase. Now here's a couple of quick pictures. As you see here, there's your provisional cast on where you've got your chain. And it goes up in a parallelogram shape as you increase and decrease. You can see my pin there. After you've done that, then you want to take your chains out and put your stitches on your needle so that gives you your live stitches. Once you do that you fold the two needles together and you do your Kitchener stitch there. That would be putting this needle here up against that needle there. So I'm going to do that next. Here's where the Kitchener is. I'm going to start. Let me grab a needle. So first we did I do the wrong end? Oh, I caught it. So you unravel your stitches. Now you want to pick them up in the back side. That will put your stitches in the right orientation to do the Kitchener. You just take your time. Undo two or three stitches at a time. That way you don't accidentally pull one of them and cause it to unravel down. That's definitely something that you don't want to do. It's extra work that's not necessary if you just take your time. And your last one. There you go. So now you have your stitches on your other needle. So there's like the picture I showed in the book. I mean in on the photo. You would fold your two pieces up next to each other and that's what causes the coil to form because you're putting your parallelogram together. So let me get a needle so we can start the Kitchener. You start with your setup and your setup is purl on the front one and then knit on the back one. Now we're set up to begin the actual Kitchener stitch. So on the front one you would knit, drop off, and purl the next one. Keeping your thread or yarn underneath. On the back one you would purl and drop off. So we repeat that again. You knit on the first one, drop it off, and purl the second one. You purl on the back one, drop off, and knit. Then you knit, drop off, purl, purl, drop off, and knit. Then you knit, drop off, purl, purl, drop off, and knit knit, drop off, purl, purl, drop off, and knit, knit, drop off, purl, purl, drop off, knit. Now at this point I check and see if my stitch count. I got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. I made a mistake somewhere. But if you happen to have a one stitch variance on one side, you can incorporate it into your actual stitching and it doesn't really show. So at this point, I would knit these two together, pull off, and then purl. Then you would purl, drop off, and knit. It just kind of all blends in. There's really It doesn't really show that bad. Knit, drop off, purl. Purl, drop off, and knit. I think I dropped a stitch right there. So then you would knit. I had to put on backwards. Drop off and purl. Purl, drop off, and knit. Then you knit these last two and drop them off. And purl the last one and drop it off. Normally you don't have an odd number. You have the exact amount you need. 
but when you get to the end you can see it finishes up very nice you can't really tell where you actually did the provisional cast on. Now we're going to go into the finishing. There's my pin that I had. I like to keep the pin, but I put it at the beginning. It helps me know where I left off at. So at this point, I'm going to do a whip stitch. You can't go through every single stitch because there's just too many of them. So what I do is I make one whip stitch in the middle of the reverse stockinette, one in the middle of the stockinette, one in the reverse. I go back in about one stitch. You know, one full stitch, not up here on this very edge. I make sure I get a good bite because you're going to have to do a lot of tugging and pulling to finish this off. So you do it all the way across. You get it all the way around. You just have to go around once. And you can tell where you left off because your pin is there. Okay, so I put one in this one. Okay, now we take our pin out of the way. Then you would pull tight. Now as you pull tight, you'll see the, these ridges start forming. This is where you would sew the second half of the closure. After you get it all closed up, you pulled it tight. Now we begin the second half where you go inside each of these humps is a good description. It also helps pull your center tight too. So you go inside each of them just it's not you know it's not a scientific thing. you just go in underneath a couple of the stitches near the edge and you go all the way around. and then you pull tight again. And that helps tighten up and make a nice smooth transition. Then you'd go to the inside and repeat the process a second time. You go through the loops again. Or not the loops, the humps. It's a good way to describe it. There's one down there, but we'll get it. And you go all the way around once or twice, pull it tight, and you see it really coils it up really nicely. And then since it's a kid's hat, I like to make one little knot. It's, I know there's no knotting in knitting, but in this case, since it's a kid's hat, I like to do one overhand knot just to secure it. Then I just weave my tail in a, around again a little ways. trim it off and there's your hat. Of course you got another tail to trim too but there is your finished spiral hat.